Now, I know I'm already going through and doing the Batman Arkham series and reviewing each title and DLC, but I'm currently moving house and my Arkham Origins is packed up in a box somewhere. So I thought I'd go back to a game series that completely changed my life. Many people have these games and that changed them. Metal Gear Solid was my brother's game, obviously Doom is a major one for a lot of people, but obviously if you've checked out some of my other videos, it's pretty clear what my game is. The first time I saw Gears of War, I was at my local video store and I couldn't really find anything that appealed to me. The cover art of Gears looked like a horror game and still to this day I am a little bitch and avoid horror games. Anyway, I picked it up and I threw it into my 360 and while there were some horror undertones, Gears completely surprised me. It was a macho, over the top action title that I just couldn't get enough of. So anyway, I thought I'd go back and review the real Gears of War games because Gears Tactics fucking sucks. Gears of War is a shooter and not a turn-based game like Pokemon. That'd be like making a Doom game, but instead of it being a first-person shooter, it's a basketball game. Anyway, Gears Tactics, fucking stupid. So I thought I'd go back and play the original Gears of War game starting with Gears of War 1. Now obviously, I'm playing Gears Ultimate and that's because it's the same as Gears 1 with just some updated graphics and an added extra level. Gears is also the title that me and my best mate played growing up, so when I told my mate Ian at Scriptable I was revisiting the Gears games, it was a no-brainer that he wanted in. For those of you who for whatever reason have never played a Gears game before, Gears 1 Ultimate is where to start, or you can play the original Gears of War and it's the same game with just different graphics. Anyways, let's get into some backstory. The planet of Serra has known nothing really but war. Prior to the events of the game, there was a civil war known as the Pendulum Wars that lasted 79 years for the planet's energy or fuel supply known as Emulsion. Shortly after the Pendulum Wars ended, a mysterious monstrous threat emerged from the ground destroying everything and everyone in their way known as the Locust. Unreasonable, unstoppable and unyielding, the Locust devastated the Earth's surface to a point where the COG, the Coalition of Ordered Governments, used the Hammer of Dawn satellite weapon on their own cities in hopes of defeating the Locust once and for all. Now obviously it didn't work and against all odds, the COG are fighting back to put a stop to the Locust once and for all. Gears of War 1 starts 14 years after E-Day, which is Emergence Day when the Locust appeared, and you play as Marcus Phoenix, voiced by Bender Bending Rodriguez himself. You're sprung out of prison by your best mate Dominic Santiago on orders from the COG, because the COG need all the help they can get. Looks to me like you need all the help you can get. Now Marcus was put into prison for disobeying an order to save his father's life. You'll start the game learning the basic mechanics of getting into cover, aiming, shooting and reloading. Now reloading is a little different in Gears games. You can hit the reload button at any time you want to or when you need to reload and just let the animation play out like you normally would. Or you can play this small micro game. By hitting the reload button again when the slider is in a certain field it will give you a damage boost to the clip. If your slider misses that area though you jam the gun and it will take longer to reload and fix the gun rather than just waiting for the reload animation to finish. This minigame is fucking great because it's high risk and high reward that can make or break situations. There are loads of stress and tension when you're surrounded by locust and you jam your gun. Gameplay in Gears if you've not experienced it before is a simple pop and stop cover shooter. You'll slam into cover, pop out, shoot, throw grenades and if you've got the Lancer equipped you can partake in the oldest Gears tradition of carving fuckers in half. Gears of War originally released in late 2006 and I'd never experienced anything like this before. The gameplay is brutal, simple and polished. Now characters can hold two main weapons, four grenades and a pistol. The controls are also quite simple as well, just like the combat with one button to jump into cover, a melee button, interact with items like doors and stuff and the d-pad is used to change out your weapons. So the controls and the combat is pretty simple and straightforward, so what makes Gears, well, Gears? It's the weapons and the gore. Now sure, there are games out there that turn enemies into mist, and while there is a blood misting effect here, there is explosive crunches and body parts flying everywhere. There is nothing better than hearing the sploosh of a head exploding with a long shot to the head. There are also some fantastic weapons in not only Gears of War, but in the series as a whole. We've got the iconic Lancer Assault Rifle, which is a standard assault rifle with a chainsaw attached to the bottom of it. The Torque Bow, which is a charging crossbow styled weapon that uses explosive arrows, but the arrows don't explode on impact. But after a short period of time after the arrow sticks to you, 
just to give you enough time to recognise what happened and to say, fuck. The boom shot is the standard grenade launch, and while it's nothing special, it's pretty cool to see a barrage of bodies just fly up into the air. The Nasher is your standard shotgun, and getting up and close with this weapon does exactly what you'd expect. And look, I'm going to trigger some people here, but I think it gives the Super Shotgun from Doom a run for its money. Now, the sound, world, and character designs reflect the gory, action-packed world of Sarah and in Gears of War. Both the Locust and Humans are huge behemoth characters that slam into cover. Like, fuck, dude, look at the Coal Train's arms, for fuck's sake. Coal? As in the Coal Train? Yeah, that's right. While the world, gameplay, and the sound design is great, the story in Gears of War 1 is basically near non-existent. Player 1 will play as Marcus, while Player 2 will control Dom. You'll start getting sprung out of jail and joining Delta Squad. You'll then need to track down a team that's gone missing that has an item known as the Resonator. You lose team member Anthony Carmine to a sniper, you find a missing member in Cole trained from the squad that went missing, and rescue the remaining squad members who are pinned down. The game's big bad and my personal favourite of the series, General Ram appears and, well, your team's lieutenant gets pretty fucked. I mean, look at him, he's stopping a chainsaw with his bare hands. Marcus then becomes the new lieutenant of Delta Squad, Cole and Bear join the team, and your mission is to deploy the Resonator inside Locust Tunnels, which will map out their world, and from there punch the data into the light mass bomb, which will then go through the tunnels and explode. Now while there isn't much narrative, Gears 1 does set up the world, introduce you to characters, and give you some backstory and make attachment to those characters. We know Marcus is a disgraced war veteran, Dom is his best mate who's always had his back, and we get droplets of his story with his tattoo and one line made off on the side. I won't lie, the first time I saw Dom and the world of Gears, I examined everything. What are the pouches on the belts? What's inside the pouches on the belts? What is thrash ball? How the fuck does a berserker breed? And Dom's tattoo of a heart that says Maria. But anyway, during every mission we get banter between the members of Delta Squad. You hear that? What the hell's that sound? It's just the wind. Yeah, right. When's the last time the wind said hostiles to you? Baird is a technical genius and a comedic goldmine. Oh, it's bullshit. Somebody here figured out the cold plate thrash ball. Now it's all, oh, cold train, tell us all about that play again. And hey, number 83, sign my share. Cold train is the lovable goof, and he's fantastic for morale, not only in the world of gears, but also for the player. When you're getting shot to shit and you hear cold train loving it, it lifts your spirit a little bit. Well, at least it did for me. There are, however, though, some issues, especially in the remaster. Now, if you're looking for a story that'll hook you like so many people have said The Last of Us 1 and 2 have a fantastic story, yeah, sure, mate. There's no real story in Gears of War 1. It's solid gameplay, character development, and world setting where Gears of War 2 provides you with that story. Also, this is a remaster, and it's got bugs. Now, the OG, original Gears of War game had graphical texture popping, but everything outside of that was fine. Here in the remaster, while there's no texture issues and everything looks great, I've seen Gretches, which is a small enemy variant, roof run on nothing floating in the air. The Lancer chainsaw execution is great, but do it on a wretch and you're slicing through the air and slicing through nothing and blood comes out. These are small issues, sure, but it's an issue that the OG Gears game didn't have. Also logging into Gears Ultimate, you'll get a pop-up saying that Gears of War 4 is available now, and it kind of feels like this game has been just completely forgotten about because Gears 5 has been out for over a year. Now this isn't really a negative for Gears of War 1, but there are things that are in this game that aren't really in future games and that's some of the bosses. Gears of War 1's first boss is the Berserker, which is a terrifying, tense, claustrophobic fight. Now you'll go up against three Berserkers throughout the entire campaign. The first one is horror, the second one is out of fucking nowhere, and the third one is pretty simple and easy to get around. Now you'll go up against a full-blown and adult corpse, which is rad, but you don't go up against either of these enemy variants again in the series. Now yes, you sort of do on the Horde mode in the Future Gears games, but you'll never have the tension of going up against a Berserker in the campaign again, and no, the Berserker from Gears 3 doesn't count, because that's a Lambert Berserker. Now Gears is also a game from 2006, and the Ultimate Edition changes nothing except for graphics and cutscenes and adding some new bugs, which is weird, but the gameplay is the same. There's also enemies in Gears 1, like the Berserker, that we never really see again. In the second act of the game, that introduces us to the Krill. At night time, these bat-like creatures attack and eat anything in the darkness. 
Now in the second act to freely move around the level you need to use light from torches or propane tanks and run from point to point and avoid being killed by the krill. Think of them like the creatures from that movie Pitch Black but they're smaller and they can fly. In future Gears games you have nighttime levels and there's no krill to be seen which is a shame as the threat of being destroyed when you're out of the light is thrilling. Now while I had barely any bugs my buddy Ian at Scriptable had some issues. During points in the campaign you'll separate from your team, you'll either separate with another AI team member or solo depending on where you are in each mission. Now during one mission if one player progresses while the other explores, the other player will be teleported to your location which is pretty standard stuff. During one mission I'd separated from Ian and he needed to clear his portion of the map where I had to do mine. However he teleported to my side of the map and we couldn't progress any further in the campaign so we had to reload a checkpoint which had never happened before. Now there's also one mission at the end of Act 2 where you drive a car in the city at night time. Player 1 will drive while Player 2 will use a LED turret to take out the krill chasing you. Now if the LED turret is activated it drains the battery from the car and it basically turns off the engine. So teamwork and communication is a bit key here. Now this is what I saw and this is what Ian saw on his screen. He couldn't use the turret at all and to get around this he'd activate his LED turret and spin 360 constantly just trying to hit things. He also got kicked from the game a couple of times too and we're both playing this on an Xbox Series X. Personally though Gears of War was a game that provided me with a challenge when I was a kid and when beating it on the easiest difficulty I went back and I played it again and again increasing the difficulty. I've made friends overseas from playing Gears of War 3's beta, I've gotten shirts, hats, a life size gold retro lancer, the Gears of War Triton headset, collected edition copies of the game, I went to the Gears 5 Melbourne launch party and had a fantastic time. It's by far my favourite game series and I think it's the best exclusive series that Xbox has. Sorry Halo fans. Now I'm looking forward to going back and playing more of this series and yes I'll return to Gears of War Judgment as well. Now if you've not played Gears of War before or you can't understand why people love it, Gears of War Ultimate Edition is a pretty great place to start. Now Gears of War 2 will be up next and there's even more to unpack there as this game gave us Horde Mode, the first game that made survival modes popular and put them into mainstream games. But what about you? Have you played Gears before? What's your first memory of the series or better yet, what's your life changing game? Let me know in the comments below and as well as what other games you'd want me to take a look at in the future too, including your life changing game.